the Atlantic Ocean off the coast of Guyana. A trawler's net goes down into the water of South America's continental shelf. The trawler is one of a fleet of highly specialized, often foreign-owned craft. They are small but modern vessels with powerful engines and refrigerated holds. The sample net tells them when they have found their target. These boats are not after fish. They seek shrimp a food that brings high prices on world markets. By the time the boat returns to port, the shrimps will have been bagged and frozen. The catch varies from 3 to 15 tons for a 3 to 4 week trip. The operation is expensive, but the world price of shrimp is high. Most of the catch will stay in Guyana only long enough to be sorted and packaged. It is destined for the lucrative export markets. But this successful and simple operation creates a food problem with worldwide implications. These trawlers are built specifically to handle shrimp. But their nets often contain only 15% shrimp. The rest is fish and various invertebrates. There may be more than 100 different species, most of which are good eating and commercially useful. But the highly prized shrimp claim the limited storage space below deck. So the fish is thrown back into the sea. A terrible waste of food. Instead of feeding people, this fish becomes food for seabirds and for the sharks whose numbers are increasing in these waters. Every year, 200,000 tons of this edible protein is thrown overboard by trawlermen off the Guyanas. And this is only one small part of the ocean. Shrimp thrive in tropical coastal waters around the world. There are similar shrimping operations in the Gulf of Mexico and off the coasts of South America, Africa, and Asia. Assessments made by the U.S. National Academy of Sciences study group indicate the worldwide total of fish bycatch discarded from shrimp trawlers is between 16 and 21 million tons every year. This is almost equal to the amount of fish now being consumed directly by the people in developing countries. All this waste occurs in the same areas where more food is desperately needed. In Guyana, however, something is now being done about this. Beginning in 1973, the government of Guyana requested each of the 200 trawlers operating out of Georgetown to bring in at least one ton of bycatch fish per trip, roughly one day's catch. In 1978, this was increased to two tons. The government also banned all imports of fish and fish products, thus saving foreign exchange and ensuring a ready local market for the bycatch. And the International Development Research Centre, a publicly funded Canadian organisation, was asked to help the Guyana State Corporation develop ways to utilize this food resource. With help from IDRC and with consultants from the Canadian Federal Fisheries Laboratories, a pilot scale operation was established to process part of the bycatch. The processing center provides regular employment for more than 100 local people. 
Before 1973, there was no commercial fish processing in Guyana. Salted, smoked, or pickled fish were all imported and relatively expensive. Today, this pilot plant processes more than 20 tons of fish every month, establishing the basis for a commercial operation. Once scaled and cleaned, some of the fish is processed to make traditional products that were formerly imported. Salt fish, for example, is a long time favorite in Guyana and in most Caribbean countries. The simplest and cheapest way to dry the fish is to spread them on racks in the sun, though a large indoor dryer is used in wet weather. Fish to be smoked, such as cavalli, are first soaked in brine for two days. Production of this popular product is now close to 500 pounds a week, and storage tests show that smoked fish can be kept for over three months. A number of products, new to Guyana, have been developed in the bycatch project. These have potential for large-scale production. Smoked fish, for instance, is blended with margarine and local herbs to make a sandwich spread. This has proven to be very popular for home or institutional use. Export of this Guyana-made fish paste to some Caribbean countries has already begun. Fresh frozen fish fillets made from sea trout and other larger species are also attracting orders. So much so that the pilot plant cannot always meet the demand. Equally popular are frozen whole dressed fish. These are sold to local markets and street vendors and are in demand by many Caribbean countries. The smaller and less known fish are put into a flesh and bone separator to make minced fish, a new product with high market potential. The waste from this process can be included in meal for livestock feed. The minced flesh is sold either fresh, frozen or salted. Minced fish, dried and salted, will normally keep for four months in sealed plastic bags without refrigeration. It is ideal for shipping to remote inland communities. Sharks are a menace to both man and the fish he needs. But those that find their way into the nets are put to good use. Names are an important factor in marketing the bycatch successfully. Shark flesh, salted or smoked, sells very well under the name of white flake. Shark fin is an export product highly prized throughout the world for Chinese cooking. And shark skin is a valuable leather. Shredded shark fin is just one of the more unusual specialty products developed from the bycatch. Others made on an experimental scale include fish jam, pickled fish, even fish sausages. Smoked fish, which is popular in traditional cooking, keeps well and is an important source of protein, especially for the rural and interior people of Guyana. These relatively remote areas had previously depended entirely on expensive imported supplies. The bycatch project now provides most of their smoked fish. popularize the new products, the project personnel developed special recipes. And after coating, you'd have to shake it off to get rid of the excessive breadcrumbs, right? These recipes are distributed during cooking demonstrations and tastings at rural fairs and exhibitions. The pilot plant can still only process about one-tenth of the bycatch landings. About 200 tons of fresh bycatch fish is sold every month to hawkers and traders. 
They sell it at markets in neighboring towns and villages, as well as in Georgetown. The increasing demand for fresh fish is stimulating the development of the fishing industry in Guyana. And there's room for further growth. Now, where are we going? And what are we hoping to achieve by this? We are hoping that maybe someday we will be able to collect a larger quantity of this fish, which is caught as the incidental catch of the shrimp trawlers. We estimate, and this is based on figures that have been collected by various surveys, that about 200,000 tons of this valuable protein is dumped every year on the Guyana continental shelf. And all we are thinking about is maybe harvesting just a third of this amount. In order to do this, we will have to arrange a method of collection. One suggested solution is the short-term storage of the bycatch in a tank of chilled seawater on the trawler's after deck. Then, at regular intervals, the fish can be pumped into the holes of a large collector vessel, which can service the fleet. Most developing countries are trying hard to produce enough food to feed themselves. Yet every year, some 20 million tons of edible fish is thrown away by shrimp trawlers operating off their coasts. By saving this bycatch, the supply of fish to these countries will be doubled. The pilot project in Guyana is showing a way to this worldwide goal. 